Good morning. It is 6 a.m. and I just raided the freezer to see what I felt like prepping today. Um, I have a one and a half pound pack of frozen solid ground chuck. I have a lemon garlic pork tenderloin and I have these two packs of chicken thighs. They're the boneless skinless chicken thighs. Um, that were reduced at one point at Harris Teeter, clearly huh, February, um, that have been in my freezer for a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and thaw these and cook them up in my cast iron with a little, um, probably with a little baking grease. Um, yes, they are marinated. All, all three of these are. And so of course they do have, all of them say, you know, 2% or less of canola or something like that. No, I don't like seed oils. No, I don't intentionally add them. But some of these things, it's it's a small amount. And so I let it slide. Um, I'm a little bit more relaxed in that respect um, when it comes to some of these marinades and everything um, in, in small amounts. Everybody's got to, you know, make those choices for themselves. But that's just what works for me. Um, so right now everything is frozen solid. But at 6 a.m., I'm going to put these all in a big bowl of water, um, nice cold water, and let them hang out and try to thaw so that I can get these cooked up over the course of the day for meal prep. All right, so forgive, oh, my window is a little, anyway, um, I, it is my day off and I'm going to do a meal prep video, um, putting together a few things, but I wanted to stop real quick at the grocery store and just see, because early in the morning, um, this is when I like to check for deals. So I will look for any little yellow sticker markdown kind of stuff this time of day, especially in beef. I mean, I know everybody knows that beef is expensive right now. So, um, I'm going to go in and check really quick and see if there's anything on sale that I just have to grab so that I can throw that in with the rest of my meal prep for today. So see what we can find. All right. Just got back from Teeter. Look at the yellow stickers. They make me so happy. Uh, so first of all, if you have a Harris Teeter by you, <clears throat> today would be the last day that these are on sale. But the rice bacon, the one and a half pound packs that are normally like $12.99 are all $6.99 right now. So stock up because there's no bacon like rice bacon. Uh, the Faye yogurt um, was on sale for $4.99. And uh, that's the quart size. So that's awesome. Colby Jack to put on burgers that I'm going to be making later today. Um, I usually do mine plain, um, but everybody else in the family prefers Colby Jack on their burgers. So that's what that's for. So yellow stickers. These packs of the Strauss, excuse me, I've got in my receipt. The meatloaf mix, which is pork, beef, and veal. Um, it's a little over a pound, as you can see. The regular retail on these is $7.99. And then we had $5 off stickers on those. So each of these packs was $2.99 for meatloaf mix. I may, may make meatloaf. I may just make patties and do them on the griddle. I mean, why not? Meat's meat, man. So that's that. Then I got some beautiful thick. Well, one's thick, one's okay. Um, sirloin fillets. So normally $10.99 a pound, marked down to $7.69 a pound. As you can see, no discoloration or anything. They're beautiful. Um, grabbed a pack of cubed steak, um, mainly because it was only three bucks. I mean, it's not normally expensive anyway, but, um, I figured I could do something with it. I don't know what, but it's meat, you know, salt and it's good. Um, and then I got these little chuck tender steaks. These I don't love because despite all of that beautiful marbling that you would think that would actually make it tender, they're pretty tough. So um, typically with these, I will brown them up really well in the cast iron and then cut them into strips to have as like steak and eggs. Um, and so having something that's kind of cheap, you know, about a pound for five bucks, that's not bad at all either. So this is my my little mini, uh, my yellow strip, yellow sticker uh, haul from my local teeter right by my house. So again, please go buy all of the rice bacon and it's both. It's the hickory and the applewood, but the hickory is my favorite. So grab what you can while it's on sale. Uh, today is the last day of that sale. So woohoo. All right. So one of the things that I am prepping today is I'm going to take this. It is uh, two one and a half pound packs of ground chuck that I had in the freezer that I thought this morning. 
and I'm going to make these into quarter pound burger balls that I'm going to do on my Blackstone here in a few minutes. So basically what I do, I do season them with more than just salt and pepper. Um, my husband does his own seasoning mix. The only thing I will say is that it does include garlic salt, but otherwise this is his own combination of, of spices. Um, so I do use this. It will seem excessive when I sprinkle it, but it is a lot of stuff mixed together. He's probably going to be peeved because I'm taking like most of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this, like I said, it does include garlic salt, but then it has some other seasonings mixed in as well. And basically what I'm going to do is get all nitty gritty. I did wash my hands before I started just so we're clear. Um, but I'm going to mix this all together really, really well and get those spices all incorporated in with the ground beef. And then I'm going to measure this out into four ounce balls that I will then go and cook on the griddle to make nice, like kind of smash burger style. The reason I like to do these in four ounce patties is because then, you know, I can make sure that I'm getting my appropriate amount of meat that I plan to eat each day, which I usually aim between one and a half pounds to two pounds of beef a day if I can get it. Um, but that way it makes it easier to say, okay, I need this many patties to reach my goal for the day. So I'm going to get this all mixed up and then I'll show you how it turns out at the end. And then we'll move out to the griddle and get these guys cooked up here in a few minutes. All right. So here we are preheated griddle, got everybody on high. Uh, my husband does all of this on medium high when he makes them. I'm doing them on high because I like mine a little crispy around the edges. So, uh, yes, you will see that my griddle is pitted, but it is seasoned. I have had this for, I think, like four years now. We keep it seasoned. It ends up all Pangea. I'm not worried. It's fine. It works. It cooks my food. Nothing sticks. So that is where we're at. And we're going to start literally just going to arrange these guys okay just going to throw them on I ended up with one like really kind of small one that's only three ounces so I did not have a full three and a half pounds like I thought I did so I had like three and not even a quarter pound so I was a little wrong uh, or excuse me, two and a quarter pound. Anyway, this is where we're at. So I'm gonna start smashing in one second. All right, here we go, moment of truth. These will always, always, <laughs> always stick. It never fails. Usually I'm better at throwing them than that, but that's where we're at. Perfect. Whoop, whoop. I'll keep you posted. All right. Here the stuff's on. So I'm going to let these hang out for a few minutes, give them a flip, another smash, and then I'll show you what they look like when we're all done. All right. Everybody's had their first and second little smashy smash. So we're going to see what we're looking like if we go ahead and flip everybody. Yum. Ah. He's a little guy. That'll be a snack for later. Right. Seriously, if you do not own an outdoor griddle, it does not have to be Blackstone. Uh, this is one of the OGs with the drains on the front. The drain is the first thing everybody loses. Uh, but if you don't have a griddle, I highly, highly suggest getting one. Um, even if you get the little small one, you don't have to get the 36 inch. Um, but yeah, these things are 
one of the best ways to batch cook and just easy, easy, easy maintenance. So I highly, highly recommend it. Okay, I decided against the flat top for the pre-marinated chicken stuff that I took out of the freezer. Here is that. This one with the green is the cilantro lime. This one on the bottom is a chimichurri seasoned, but they're just boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I honestly, I couldn't really tell with the package how many were in there, but there were only like two and a half in each package. And it just didn't seem to make sense to do the big flat top, the 36 inch um, with so little meat. So I'm just gonna use my, it's the copper nonstick. Um, right now I've got it on medium high and once it's nice and warmed, I've got my coffee tin full of bacon grease. And so this is what I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna throw a spoon of bacon grease in here, some hand lube as they call it. Uh, not that I really need it. This is like the best little nonstick pan. And uh, we picked it up from, I think TJ Maxx or Marshall's one. Um, a couple of years ago because the bottom was dented <laughs> and so it was like seven bucks it was super cheap so get this all swirled around and I'm gonna start with the chimichurri and I'm just gonna grab a couple and throw them in let's see of the chimichurri there are only two so this you see what I mean it just didn't make sense so I'm gonna let these start cooking up on both sides, pull them off, and then throw the cilantro lime in and see how these turn out for a little bit of a prep. All right, if you can hear me over the sizzle, I drained what was in here as far as the moisture, watch my thongs. Now that they're getting closer to done, and I'm kind of letting them hang out and then dry pan for a little bit so that they can brown up a little bit more on both sides. Um, just to, uh, <laughs> aesthetically, that's just how I want them. I don't know. It just seems right. So, let them hang out in, in the pan for a few more minutes just to, uh, to do that little, little bit of browning. And then I'm going to pull them out. So, um, as you can see, the marinade is kind of chunky. I, I don't know. I mean, what do you want? This whole pan was about $4 worth of chicken thighs. It's cheap. I'm all about cheap, okay? Like, this is, this is just how I roll. But it's food, right? It's, you know, might not be my favorite, but it's food. And, um... Yeah, it's not just for me. My daughter loves chicken thighs. It's like her favorite thing ever. So she'll probably help me out with these a little bit. But yeah, this is what we're finished with. All right. So far we have the chicken thighs. You can see by the green, these two are the silly cat. Got to do my nails. This polish is like super discolored in here. Um, so. This is the cilantro lime, these two and these little fragments over here. And then these two on the top are the uh, chimichurri marinated. And then I've got my burgers, which are nice and chilled back there now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in a container and stow them away in the fridge to use for the rest of the week. And I did snack on the little tiny guy and it was delicious, no regrets. <laughs> okay. You can see how long this has been in my freezer over a month, but you know what? I got like six of these uh, from the meat department for next to nothing uh, because they were all going out of date that day. So I bought a whole bunch of them. I think I have like seven or eight and just threw them all directly in the freezer. The best thing about this packaging is you just put it in some water and in like an hour it's thawed. So. Um, this is ready to go. All I'm gonna do is take it out of the package and kind of blot off some of the marinade that's on there and then put it directly on my little air fryer rack. These I typically will air fry for about 20 minutes at 400 and then flip them both over 
and diagonal to where they were before and do them for another 15 minutes until I reach that internal temperature um, and then pull it out of the air fryer. What I do with these, all, all of the pre-marinated, regardless of the flavor, I let them cool and then I slice them into like half inch thick medallions and stick them in the fridge. This is my go-to cold meat. I'm telling you, I don't know why, like I don't like them hot, I don't like them fresh. I like them days later in the refrigerator, ice cold, and like when I get home and I'm cooking dinner, if I'm hungry or if I get hangry, I just reach in and I grab a slice of it. This, you know, no, snacking is not ideal when it comes to carnivore, but if you can have meat that's just right there and ready to throw into your face hole when you are desperate, that's the way to do it. So this is my answer to that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the air fryer and then I will show it to you when we are all done with that one. Okay, so I have two of these packs of meatloaf mix. Um, so it does seem that pork is the primary ingredient. I'm fine with that. I totally tolerate pork. Um, but these are user sell-by today. And I mean, like the color is perfect. They look beautiful. And regular price on this is $7.99. And they have the $5 off stickers. So $2.99 a piece. I mean, this is, this is dirt cheap. I'm super excited. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in my biscuit bowl, which my mom got for me. It's my old wooden bowl. Um, I'm going to throw these guys in there and add some egg and some Parmesan cheese and some seasoning. Um, kind of like what I would normally do for a meatloaf. Um, but I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to make meatballs. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It just sounded something poppable sounds really good. So that's my plan. I'm going to mix everything together and then we're going to do these on the griddle outside just to make that um, a little bit easier. So that is what's next. Okay, time to get started. Biscuit bowl. No, I'm going to make meat biscuits. Is that a thing? So I'm going to throw these two packs of meatloaf mix in. And I have two large eggs. I cracked that miserably, but successful without the shell in there. <laughs> My dogs want to talk. No Chinook, she squeaks a lot. And some good old cheapo grated Parmesan cheese. with that a little bit. So I'm going to sprinkle what looks like about a half a cup. Alright, then the way I shall season. I'm going to do kosher salt, some black pepper, lots and lots and lots of garlic powder. Yes, there are carbs in garlic powder. And I have like a very little bit of onion powder left. Also has carbs. Also don't care. These things make it delicious. It makes it sustainable for me. So that's my thing. So now I'm going to get my hands dirty and uh, mix all of this and the egg jiggle up and go from there. All right. Where's that pork tenderloin straight out of the air fryer? And she was rotated and cooked in there at 400 for a total of about 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, let me see some steam. So I'm gonna let this cool and then slice it into some medallions and throw her in the fridge for snacks and things later. She's so pretty. Yummy yum. All right. All right, I just took my meatballs out of the oven and they look so good. Granted, they're all stuck together with uh, all their, like, drippings, but, oh my god. Seriously, I'm so excited. So excited! Hey gang, welcome back. So, I hope you enjoyed this little collection of meal prep for the next few days for my house. Um... I mentioned before, but just a reminder, I am the only one that follows a primarily carnivore diet in the household. 
Uh, my husband is more keto, low carb, and then my kids are teenagers and they are impossible to control. So uh, they have a tendency to, you know, they eat whatever it is that I make, but then they have their own money and they kind of buy their own junk. So I try to encourage them to make good choices, but you know how kids are. So this is primarily meal prep for me and for my husband. Um, he typically adds some vegetables, some more dairy, um, and you know, some low carb snacks and things here and there that he's able to tolerate really well. Um, but you know, for me, I find meat, eggs, and some dairy to be the easiest for me. So I hope this helped you guys out a little bit and um, I hope it's informative. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, I'm happy to answer anything I can um, and, and hopefully get back to everyone as quickly as possible. And uh, if you aren't already, you can also always follow me over on Instagram. I'm at carnivore and coffee with the dots between carnivore and coffee. Um, so definitely meet me over there. I post daily um, and, uh, you know, try and share as much as I can there as well. This is Nelson. <laughs> There's probably a squirrel outside. They're about to all start because this is life with four dogs. It's noisy. And you know, they're all alert because I've been cooking meat all day. So that's what I smell like. So anyway, I hope you found this enjoyable or informative. So come on back. We'll see you next time for another meal prep, maybe what I eat in a day video. And of course, if you have any suggestions for things you'd like for me to cover, please let me know. Um, I would love to help you guys out and share as much information with you as I can. So always do that and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Have a wonderful day, wonderful week. Every day is a new start. See you soon.